that is adore you. We give you the praise and the glory. We ask that as we open into your word this morning, open our eyes that we may behold treasures out of your law. Lord, help us that we may adjust our life as we receive revelation and inspiration. We pray for the fear of God that it will come into our heart. We pray that you will bless the speaker and bless every hearer. Bless those that will be listening to this message afterwards. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, as God's people said, Amen. All right. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I will start reading from verse number 9, 2 Corinthians 5 from verse number 9. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Let me read one more scripture, Romans 14. Romans 14. Romans 14, verse number 12. Romans 14, verse number 12. So then, so then, every one of us shall give account of himself to God. So then, every one of us shall give an account account of himself to God. Actually, let's read one more. First Corinthians chapter 3. I just like to tie all the scriptures together. First Corinthians chapter number 3. From verse number 10. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon for other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day, for the day shall declare, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he had built, Thereupon he shall receive a reward. And if any man's work shall be born, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. You know, last week um, we began a series. We began a series to look at the judgment seat of Christ. Or we titled it, the, the, Your Day in Court. And I said to us that, we are going to appear in court one day. We are going to stand before the race seat or the judgment seat. On that day, you will not have a solicitor or a barrister. On that day, you will not have your wife or your husband or your pastor next to you. You are going to stand by yourself. In those scriptures that we've read, it says you will give an account of yourselves. It's each and every one of us. All of us will account for our life, for every single thing that we have done while we are in the body, whether it is good or bad. Let me just pause here and say something. One of the fundamental um, responsibilities of a good shepherd is that he must prepare you for eternity. He must prepare you for the life to come. You see, a good mother or a good father will not give to their children what they want. You see, um, recently, uh, Jeremiah asked me, said, Dad, I would like to eat either KFC or McDonald's. And he put me under so much pressure. And I didn't want to buy. I didn't want to buy. Um, later on, I think I gave in. And while I was driving into KFC or McDonald's, I said, Jeremiah, you know what? We are to be blamed. I'm going to buy this thing for you. Not because I want to buy. I should not buy. You know, I said, because this thing is going to harm your body. This thing 
this thing they are cooking there is not good for you. Unfortunately, when we should have stopped it while we were young, we didn't do it. We were the ones that encouraged you. So it, now, it has now become a habit. So our children, the way they eat today is because of the way we have trained them. In the same way, if you look at a pastor or pastors today, many of the things we speak, many of the things we preach on the pulpit has nothing to do with eternity. You know, it, it has to do with how God is going to bless you. You are going to amass it. While those things are good, we must prepare people for this life. For example, relationship, marriage, and all these things. Uh, any preaching of the gospel must prepare people for this life. But more importantly, the life to come. You know, I don't know about you, but every time I go to bed, every day I wake up, I look at the opportunity, I'm still here. God, I thank you. But I always think the day I'm going to sleep and I never wake up again. And I think about people who have gone, friends, family, mothers, fathers. You know, people who have gone right now. Well, they've been buried there, but they're somewhere now. The curtain has been drawn. You know, they cannot do anything right now. What is happening? You begin to wonder, what's happening to my dad who is in the grave? What's happening to my mom? What is awaiting them? They cannot repent. They cannot change things. So I began to look at it. God, this is an opportunity for me to make good my life, to change things in my life before it is too late. And listen to me, let me tell you something. One of the reasons why I'm going back is that I don't want a single person under our care, yeah, to die and not know what to expect. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. You agree with me? You know, even for me, that I've been preaching for decades now, the more I look into the scripture, I begin to ask myself, is this real? Is this what is waiting for me? Am I prepared for it? Is It has to... I have to begin to examine myself where I have to change my life, where I have to ask God for forgiveness. And I hope the same thing will happen to you as you listen to this message. Bible says we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. And you know what? We're going to account for everything that we have done in the flesh. It's actually a reward seat where we're going to be rewarded for what we have done. Every believer, I told us we're going to be judged for our actions. We're going to be judged for our thoughts, we're going to be judged for our motives. Sometimes your actions are right, but your motives are wrong. Um, you're going to be judged for your words. You know, you know. sometimes we just make jests. No, I was only joking. Every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account. On that day, that's what the Bible says, your treasures and your talent. Every single talent that God has given to you. Number one, do you, do you even know the talent you have? Talk less of use it. There are some you gave five, there are some you gave two. Are you using it or are you burying it? We are going to account for all these things. And that's why, can you see the reason why Paul says, because we know the terror of God. And I said something that, you see, now, Christ is at the throne of mercy. That's why the book of Hebrews says we should come to obtain mercy and grace. You know, now, if it, there's nothing that you do, if you ask God right now, forgive me, he will forgive you. But once, this is the dispensation of grace. Once the whistle is blown, two things can happen to you. Once you die or the rapture takes place, it's, that's the end. In other words, you can't ask for forgiveness. You cannot walk for God. Nothing matters again. That's why we must be scared. We could be in this place and this place collapses. You could be going and the car kicks you down. You know, I left here last Sunday and I was driving as I was about to turn into my house. Where I live, Myself and I can't even remember. I think my children, as we're t at the middle of the road, you know, the island where, you know, between the road lay a man there. And they were trying to resuscitate him, the man. Press his heart. Press his heart. And I saw the fire. I think it must have been an accident. And I looked at it and I said, This man had left his house today. He had plans. He was going somewhere. You know, I, I intend going back. I've not gone back to go and ask whether did the man survive. Maybe he did. Thank God. Maybe he's already in the mortuary. That's why sometimes we are planning. We don't know what is ahead of us. That's why today is the day of salvation. We must adjust ourselves. What is it that I'm doing? What can I learn for some of these things? We are going to give an account of everything, talents, our treasures, and everything that we have done while we are in the flesh. We spoke about the materials. You remember the materials that we can use to build our life? They are divided into two, according to Paul. You understand me? The one, one fits fire. And one does what? One endures fire. So we've got to be careful what we are doing with our lives. So throne of mercy, 
throne of grace. You understand me? Um, throne of mercy, throne of grace now. But the next throne that we're going to be standing upon is not a throne of mercy. It's a throne of judgment. Where there will be no mercy. There will be no mercy. There will be no excuses. Is somebody with me? All right. I want to move a little bit further this morning. Are you, are you following me at all? I want to show you something. There are at least three principles that I have discovered from the word of God by which you and I will be judged. Please, it's very important. Because I don't want you to die. I said, oh, I didn't know. How many of you know that? You know, when I was doing my A-levels, was the first time I discovered the, 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 the guys, the people who mark, they have a marking scheme. So you know what? Some of those guys who were teaching us for the very first time, we just studied and studied and studied and studied and studied. Until somebody brought it and said, actually the lecturers have a marking scheme. They have to follow a marking scheme. So it's always better if you are studying, if you can have access to the marking scheme, which tells you what they require. Because you can be spending a lot of time writing jargon. One hour of the exam, it's only going to give you five marks. Whereas if you know, this is what they want here. This is what they want. So you focus your attention and your life. So on what basis am I going to be judged? On what basis are you going to be judged? Number one, deeds, your deeds. You must have heard that. Let me, let me say this. Let me repeat it again. And I'm going to take you through a few scriptures. I want to show you that your reward or your judgment will be based on your deed. Romans chapter 2. Very quickly. You are going to write very, very quickly. In fact, if you have time, write Romans 2 verse 6. Jeremiah 17 verse 10. Revelations 2 verse 23. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 6 to 8. Somebody's not writing. Somebody's just looking at me. <laughs> I'm sorry for you. Revelations 2, 23 and Revelations 22, verse 12. Let me repeat. 1 Corinthians 3, 6 to 8. Revelations 2, 23. Revelations 22, verse 12. I'm going to appeal to you. You must take time to look at it. Look at Romans very quickly. Romans chapter 2, verse 6. I want you to look at it. You know, I know you might have read it before, but it's important that you discover it again because it's consistent. By the mouth of two or more witnesses, every truth shall be established. Who will render to every man according to his deeds? Can you see that? Who will render to every man according to his deeds? You will be judged or rewarded based on your deeds. So, if you don't have good deeds, what is going to happen to you? Think about that. Very quickly, Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah chapter number 17. You know, when as I began to study this thing, I just opened my mouth. I, I said, God, have I been preaching the gospel? Is this true? Am I really prepared for this? Jeremiah chapter number 17, verse number 10. Are you there? The Lord searched the herd. I tried the rain, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Can you see that? Can you see that? Very, very important. Look at Revelations 2, 23. Revelations 2, 23. Revelations chapter 2, verse number 23. Revelations 2, verse 20. I want to show you. It's based on your deed. This is why we must be careful what we're doing. We must be careful how we live our life. Don't believe somebody said it does not matter. Every single hour, every single minute, matters how you are living, what you are doing. Even when nobody sees you, it's important. God sees you. You are being recorded. Revelations 2, verse 23. Is everybody there? Look at it. And I will kill our children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searched the rain and heart. And I will give unto every one of you according to what? Your works. Look at what he's saying. God said, I search the air. I sat your heart. Man is looking at you from the football. I'm sat in your heart. I'm looking at your inward path. I'm looking at your motive. And I will give to you according to your works. I will give to you according to you. Have we read Revelations 22, 12? No. Revelations 22, verse number 12. I don't usually write as much, as many scriptures, but I think I just want to show you beyond reasonable doubt that you got to know on the basis of which you are going to be judged. 22, verse number 12. And behold, I come quickly, 
and my reward is with me to give every man according to what? His work. His work. First Corinthians chapter 3, quickly. First Corinthians chapter, you see, can you see the, the reason why you've got to be motivated? You have to be motivated in working for God. And when you walk, you must walk right. You must labor. Now I see the reason why Paul labored so much. Paul labored. He labored abundantly. You know, you see the reason why some people will walk and walk and walk and walk and walk and walk while some people, other people are sleeping. First Corinthians chapter 3. Are you there? Look at verse number 6. First Corinthians 3, verse number 6. I have planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planted anything, neither he that watered, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planted and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to what? You know, ladies and gentlemen, look up. You know, this really encourages me. Somebody plants, another person waters. God brings in. Look at me. You know what I thought recently? Sometimes, when people leave you, when you're pastor, when people leave you, sometimes they just leave you suddenly, you get really angry. Particularly if you have invested. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Even in relationship, maybe you have invested in relationship. You know, you put all your heart and all your mind that, you know, I'm going to get something out of it. And suddenly that person just wakes up and leaves you. How many of you know that that could be very painful? Yes? And you begin to count your losses. No, I've lost. Let me be honest with you. Sometimes I look back, and I'm, I want to be very practical. Sometimes I look back at some of the children that I've raised in this ministry. You know, you raise them from kindergarten, and suddenly they go to the university, and after they go to the university, that's the time they begin to earn their money. Some are architects, some are doctors, and whatever. When you think that, yes, they've stayed here for 15, 18 years, that's the time that they should, they're supposed to be plugged in in your ministry. You know what? Suddenly they, just, they don't even say bye to you. The next time you go into a church, you just see them. And a pastor is introduced and says, this is my son. <laughs> you were the one that dedicated him. <laughs> Listen, you were, oh, I said, praise God, praise God. <laughs> I want to look at the person. This guy that was under me, that I dedicated for 15 years was under me, is now your son. When did he become your son? But you know what? Watch this. Watch this. And this might help you. I'm talking personally. This might help you. Sometimes I have to go back and say, God, does it mean you've forgotten everything I did in the life of this person? Watch me. This will help you. There's an adage where I come from. I think they normally say 20 children or 40 children cannot be together for 40 years. It's real. You know what? My siblings that we grew up in the same house, we are not in the same place again. So you find some people, they will go to the old country, some people will move on. Many people will say, why is it that the people have left the church? People, this is, this is a cosmopolitan city. People move on for different, somebody will change where they are living and they will move on. But listen to me, watch this. There are people that I have led to the Lord, I have fed for years and they have moved on to other nations. They've moved on to other churches. I don't have to be angry with them because God will not forget the labor, what I have deposited in their lives. There is reward. So, a pastor might take 50 members of my church and say, my church is growing, 5,000 members. God will only give him labor for what he has imputed in their life. He will not give him, you understand what I'm saying? It's almost like you, you release your children to go and get married. And now they are with a woman. And the woman is trying to take the praise and glory for everything that they have become. <laughs> when it was the toughest. I raised this person. If I did not raise this person, you wouldn't have all this thing. You get what I'm saying? So, you must understand. You don't have to pastor the whole world for you to have influence. Sometimes, speaking on TV, people may never come to my church, but I have labored. My books have labored. You have given. All those things will count. Did you get that? Does that free you from the numbers game? Will it free a church from the numbers game? Number is good, but it should free you. It should free you. Because God is recording every single labor. Are you following at all? You know in the parable of the talent, you know what he said? Well done. Is that right? 
good and faithful. Did you notice it didn't say well dreamt or well strategized? There are some people, always they are strategizing, they are planning. There is no reward for dreaming. <laughs> there is no reward. There are some people, they will dream for the rest of God rewards only your deeds, your substance. Are you following me at all? Number two, the second principle is, is the principle of equity or impartiality. How many of you know that? How many of you know that in life, life is not fair? How many of you know that life is not fair? How many of you know that in life, people are not treated equally? No, people are not treated equally. Sometimes because of connection, social connection, because of economic might, because of religious status. Listen to me, let me be honest with you. There are places I go today, many places I go, they will not treat me the same thing as you. You know what? When I go into some meetings, they will give me the special seat, they will give me the microphone, they won't give you. How many of you know that if, if Prince Charles, Prince Philip, President Obama, if those people go to the same function, they will not treat you the same. How many of you know what I'm talking about? They will not treat you. How many of you know that even in many churches and places, people who are richer than you, they treat them specially. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. When we come to the judgment seat of Christ, all your titles, everything that people have used to go ahead of you is stripped. Everybody is coming there as individual, not as doctor, not as Prince Charles. Nobody will re recognize Prince Charles. Nobody will bow down to your majesty. There is nothing like that. We are all equal. Aren't you happy? Watch this. I've been following with keen interest recently um, what is happening in the nation of Nigeria. The president is trying to rid the nation of corruption. Watch this. He's trying. But do you know where the problem lies? All animals are equal. But some are what? That's it. So there is a law for some people. There's a law. The day, let me tell you something. It's very easy. If they want to solve the problem of Nigeria and many nations, it's, it's, it's very easy. It doesn't take a rocket scientist. How many of you know what I'm talking about? It's just a, all, all past president, um, uh, good law, all these, uh, um, uh, Jonathan, good luck, um, Babangida, um, Abacha, and other African states. And everything. Please, we know how much they paid you. Yeah? And we will even add more to the salary. You cannot have worked for the government and be billionaire. You can't. You, you understand? Me? So can you come and declare? As long as they will cut somebody who does not have an economic mind, they will, they will make it. The people that we need to cut, the, the people who will, they will build all the roads in Nigeria, not with federal government money, all the roads, they will turn it to a better place than Dubai without borrowing money. <laughs> you know why that is not happening? You know why? Because people are not treated equally. Watch this. Isn't it going to be great? On that day, everybody will be treated equally. We are going to be judged equally. There is no partiality with God. He's not going to look at faces. It's not going to look at you whether you're a woman or a man, boy or girl. Isn't that reassuring? Romans 2. Romans 2, let me show you something. Romans 2, verse 11. This is another principle, the principle of equity or impartiality. Romans 2, verse 11. Praise the name of Jesus. Romans 2. So don't be afraid. Don't be angry. For there is no respect of persons with God. There is no respect. Peter said something. You want to write this down? Acts 10, 34. Peter said something in Acts 10, chapter. He said, for I perceive that God is not a respecter of persons. God is not a respecter of persons. God, there is no respect of persons when we come to the judgment seat. Every title. That's why I don't want to run after title. You know, every one of, most of my friends that they become doctors. I said, how do you guys just collect it? Is that how they dash doctors? You know, you want to look good in the sight of it. God is not rewarding doctor. God is not going to reward you for all the title. Reverend, brother. You know, there are certain people, oh, I'm not going to operate because they are not calling me. Listen, you don't need any title to be rewarded. God does not reward title. He rewards labor. There are many people today, their titles are longer than their name. I want my labor to be long, not my title. 